So our hybridization occurs in our single bonds. Our double and triple bonds don't form from hybridization. They actually form from unhybridized orbitals. So they remain, they keep those atomic orbitals their same shape. So let's look at an example. In this video, we'll look at double bonds. In the next video, we'll look at triple bonds. But we want to look at uh, our bond in ethylene. So we have C2H4. We draw out our Lewis structure. We have a double bond in between the carbons and then single bonds to our four hydrogens. If we want to look at our bonding, what is happening in this molecule? Let's first start with the hybridization. Okay, we'll show how that forms, and then we'll move into how the double bond forms. So to see how our hybridization occurs, we're going to look at which orbitals are actually being shared. So if we look at carbon and just focus on the valence electrons of carbon, we're going to have two electrons in the 2s, then in the 2p, we just have two electrons. Now remember this is a situation where if things don't work out the way that we need them to, we just morph it so that we end up where we want to be. This is one of those cases. What we're going to do is we're actually going to promote an electron. And what we're going to do is we're going to promote this electron so that we have a completely half-filled shell. So we're going to have a completely half-filled uh, quantum level of 2. So we're going to promote this 2s electron into our empty p orbital. Once we do that, here we have the 2s and this is essentially px, py, pz. We're going to have one electron in each. Now we do our hybridization. So for the areas of electrons around one of the carbons, they're the same. They're, there's a mirror here, so we'll just look at one carbon at a time. In this carbon here, we have one area of electrons going to the hydrogen, two areas of electrons to the other hydrogen, and then remember that double bond counts as one area of electrons. So we have three areas of electrons around that carbon. Three areas of electrons means three orbitals. So we have three areas of electrons on carbon. So we need three orbitals. So we're going to take this s orbital and two p's. So we have one, two, three orbitals. We're going to hybridize these. So we'll have sp2, because we had two p's in there, and then this will remain the pz. Yes, it is important that it's the z orbital, uh, z orientation of the p orbital, and that I'll show you very, very close, very momentarily. So we have one electron in each of these. So here is now our carbon electron uh, or our orbital diagram, our electrons in our orbitals. Then we have hydrogen. I'm running out of colors. Hydrogen. We have four of them. And they all have one electron in the 1s orbital. So for each carbon, we have two 
bonds to hydrogens. So a hydrogen is going to bond and overlap with that hybrid orbital. The second hydrogen will bond with that hybrid orbital. The third hybrid orbital is going to overlap with the other carbon. So our hybrid orbitals are shown here in the green. That's one lobe, two lobes, and three lobes. Those are the hybrid orbitals. And this is carbon in the center. And this is our second carbon over on that right-hand side. So to form the carbon to carbon bond, just one area of it, these two orbitals are going to overlap. So we'll see overlap there. Our hydrogens, that's our hydrogen, it's the 1s. They're going to overlap with one lobe of those other hybrid orbitals. And same thing over here. That's our hydrogen, the 1s. Hydrogen, 1s. So these hybrid um, bonds that are happening, the overlap that's happening, is, is ending up looking something like this. So we have the carbon to carbon overlap there, hydrogen to carbon overlap, hydrogen to carbon overlap, hydrogen to carbon overlap, hydrogen to carbon overlap. That gets us our basic structure. But now to form the second bond, okay, to form that double bond portion, the overlap there is going to occur between our unhybridized PZ orbital. So we're bringing these closer together, and that's going to allow the top and the bottom portion of that p orbital, remember that's one orbital even though it has two lobes to it, but we're going to bring these close together so that they have overlap. It's our, it was, I told you it was important that we unhybridized, did not hybridize, the pz orbital because we want that z alignment to match the Z alignment on the other carbon. So when we push these together, what happens is something like this. We have one lobe of our P orbital, PZ, then our other PZ orbital on the other carbon, and they have this overlapping above and below where those two carbons are. That above and below portion is very, very important for us, and it's what dictates between a bond like this, where the electron density or this overlap occurs between the two atoms, for this second bond that occurs that the electron density, where that overlap occurs, is above and below that plane of atoms. Now, this is indicated with any models that you build of it. Okay, this is a model of that bond. And we notice if I hold it like this, well, if I hold it like this, okay, we see our hydrogen to carbon bonds, all four of them. If I rotate it, okay, which is represented by this picture here, rotating it, these the curved ones are representing that double bond. Okay, and it represents that we are above and below that plane of atoms. When we have this difference of where the electron density is located, okay, so between the carbon and the hydrogen, that electron density is right in between. Okay, same for all of the other ones. There is also a bond, remember this overlap that's occurring here, that does occur in between here, it's not shown in this model kit. We can't show it in this model kit, which is a negative aspect of this. Remember, I told you there's no perfect model kit. Uh, there's a bond in between here that lies directly in between the atoms. That's this overlap here of our hybrid orbitals. So that bond directly between and the bonds between carbon and hydrogen 
have the electron density in between the atoms. That bond is called a sigma bond. And illustrated on this image here, we have sigma bonds between the carbons and the hydrogens, and then there's one sigma bond between the two carbons. For the double bond, that second bond that's formed that, where the electron density goes above and below, that's called a pi bond. Okay, that electron density is not in between the atoms, it's above and below the atoms. Okay, so that's represented there. Now, there are two locations of where those electron density is found, but remember that doesn't mean that that's a bond and that's a bond. That's the overlapping of the upper and the lower lobes of the PZ orbitals. Another look at this would be looking at here. This blue is showing, trying to show you the plane that happens between the carbons and the hydrogens, and the pi bonds are above and below. Okay, pi bond, excuse me, the area is above and below. Or you can have that colored picture showing there's electron density above there where the red is and below. All right, so for definitions, the sigma bond, this is defined as where the electron density is between the atoms. <clears throat> this is always the first bond formed. Uh, kind of a nickname or a way to think of this, um, this is called a head-to-head -head bond. In contrast, the pi bond is called a side-to-side -side bond. So here's head-to-head -head or directly overlapping those orbitals. Side-to-side, -side, we're just putting those orbitals right next to each other. Technical definition of the pi bond is where the electron density is ab above and below the plane of atoms. This is the second, which would be the double, uh, and or, well, not and or, well, sometimes you don't form a triple bond, but it will also be the third bond in a triple bond. So we'll talk about those next, uh, in the next video, but in a triple bond, you'll have one sigma and two pi bonds. So it'll have the second and the third will both be pi bonds. Okay, I want to show you, I have a computer simulation deal. Let's There we go. So this is ethene. That's the molecule that we've been looking at. The, uh, by the way, I do not own the rights to this. This website is found here. Uh, our sigma bonds, those are the first bonds formed. This is just rotating that molecule around. And it's showing you that overlap that's occurring. Looking at the pi bonds, again, it's rotating that molecule the same way. We see that we have above and below the plane of atoms is where the electrons are found. So if we look at them together, 
Okay, we have that plane of atoms there. Those are the sigma bonds. Then above and below is where that pi bond, there's only one pi bond, uh, has occurred. Another look at this, another kind of um, demonstration. Here's looking at unhybridized orbitals, how, it, how that overlapping happens. Okay, remember, we hybridize when we need to hybridize. If we don't need to hybridize, we don't hybridize. So oxygen molecule, right, has double bonds. Hydrogen and fluorine had single bonds. Hydrogen was an overlap of S orbitals. Fluorine was an overlap of P orbitals. Now in oxygen here, we have two different bonds that are occurring. We have one sigma bond, which will be the first bond formed, and one pi bond. This one's kind of, this uh, demonstration, again, uh, got from the internet. Uh, this one's kind of nice because you can, it plays it in steps. So if I click once, it shows us the single bond, that head-to-head -head overlap that occurs. Notice that where those overlaps um, occur, it's directly in between the oxygen. Okay, this is the back portion of that p orbital, so this is still one orbital. But the only overlap that occurs is on one lobe of that orbital. If I press play again, it's going to show the pi formation, the pi bond, and that's that side to side overlap. So that up and down shows the pi bond. Again, this is only one bond, but because it's overlapping in two locations, we get two locations of where that electron can be found. All right, in the next video, I'll show you a triple bond using similar, uh, similar examples for you.